Bon Giorno, how are we doing? Is uh, let's just get the admin out of the way. Is the um, is the mic looks all right? Let me know if the mic is all right, boys and girls, uh, and then we shall crack on. Kevin, oh ho, Steve, another Steve, another Steve Taylor. Hello, Steve. Uh, Claire, go to bed. Nice to see you, Claire. Uh, hey, Pat. Hell, oh my words, hell, hell, I'm really sorry, I've, I'm going to butcher the name, hell, hellal, hellal, from Mexico, hey Brian over on Facebook, uh, Trevor, John, Trevor, Pat, Alho, Louise, hey Louise, welcome to the gang Louise, thanks for joining us, uh, tr apparently Trevor's in the caps lock, says in uh, the audio is bang on, so there we go. Mark SH, welcome, 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 welcome. Ross, hello Ross. I think that's everyone that said hello so far. Don't think I've missed anyone. Hey, look, I am, do you know what? I bought, a few weeks ago, I bought a couple of cans of beer because I thought, right, I'm going to start this, because I don't drink beer. Uh, I thought, I'm going to start this, the live streams with beer. I'm just going to try different beers here and there. Uh, and I can't be asked. I don't. I don't want beers. So I, I'm starting. I'm going to start the live shows with daiquiris going forward. Daiquiris, my thing. And I tell you what, because tonight was an unboxing, uh, and I've got them lined up there. I haven't actually played with it. I've just had a little sip of this. This uh, Ed sent me this. Uh, well, about a week or so ago now. I've just had a little tipple out of it. That's his brand new flavour. Um, spiced fig and blackberry rum. Oh my god, it's so good. You can see the other one up here. This is the one I've had for ages. Uh, the hazelnut rum, which is like Nutella. This the rum is um, it's it's not El Dorado rum, but it's El Dorado rum. It's um, a diamond distillery in Guyana. That's that's where the rum is. But that I tell you what. So what I've got, I've got daiquiri, um, so fig and blackberry daiquiri. But I've used uh, or jet syrup instead of or sheet instead of sugar. Oh my god, that is so good. Honestly. That is that is so so good. It's um honestly the fig the fig but the berry note it's the berry notes that come through with a subtle hint of fig. That is so so good. I haven't even seen how much it is yet because uh, we're gonna I'm gonna rock it out on the uh, spiced rum channel. We're gonna do a little review of it and that won't be until mid August because I'm all scheduled up today. But that is really 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 good. I'll give you another little close up of that. Uh, oh, I need to put this on as well. Don't I? Uh, hang on, where are we? We're going to be doing some questions. Is it that one? Yes, yeah, that one. So if you've got any questions, we'll go for it. I'll get my little unboxing. Uh, right, where do we get to? So yeah, there we go. Spiced fig and blackberry rum. Not sweet, not dead man's fingers sweet. Um, just like proper, proper luscious. So I love that. But yeah, um, Guyana, Diamond Distillery. It's Eldorado. It's like, it's Eldorado. It's not Eldorado, but it's Eldorado, sort of. <laughs> right, who else we got? Ashley, daddy boy, hello Ashley, Josh, Slim Jim, hello Slim Jim, oi oi, uh, Rom, hello, is that is that your name, Rom, is that what you want me to call you, Rom, hello, hello, Rom, uh, who else we got, Mr Sykes, how you doing, Guyana, whoop, Angela, hello Angela, oh, all my little members are on here now, uh, £30.50 on Master of Malt. Is that how much it is? £30.50. I tell you what, I'd, I'd quite happy pay that. That's, that's all right, actually. What, Steve? What about making up Cockney, Cockney cocktail of apples and pears? Done that many a time, my friends. Quince, there we go. <laughs> apples, quince is like apple and pear. There we go. Done it. Done that. Been there. Done it. Got the T-shirt. Uh, hey, Simon, how you doing? Over on Faceache. Right, so tonight, I don't want to put that away because that's really nice. I might have another little play with that later. Daiquiris. I tell you what, what are people's quirky da daiquiris? Base rum, I'm just talking lime and sugar. Uh, what's your favourite daiquiri? Rum, go, comments, hit me up. I know, I know Trevor Rose is going to put like ED12 or something like that, but come on. Uh, your favourite daiquiri down there. Simple lime, sugar, what rum? I want to know. I want to know. Right. So tonight, what I've got in store. First off, I've got this little bad boy. I've got no... Will that even focus? I might have to come around here. Will that even... Will that, will that focus on the camera there? I've got absolutely no flipping idea what that is. There we go. Is that in shot? Uh, so Carl... 
uh, from Alchemix Bar over in, uh, I keep wanting to say Iowa. Is it Iowa? Where are they? Iowa. What's the other? What's the other four letter I word? Iowa. I'm sure they're Iowa. But they, he sent me that through, anyway. And my lord. I've got no idea what this is. I've not done any research whatsoever. I'm guessing Jepsons. It's Jepsons with a double P. Uh, you can't really see that. So it's J. Jepsons. Man. I'm guessing because of the sort of the O and a couple of little dots above the O and Jepsons double, it's like actually sort of Scandinavian. Uh, even though it says Chicago, USA. I'm guessing there's some sort of um, uh, Ohio. Ohio. It's, they're from Iowa. They're not from Ohio. Ohio. I can't even say it. Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> yeah, no, they're from Iowa. Uh, yeah, so I'm guessing that's some sort of Scandinavian thing. Absolutely no idea. So he sent me that over. I think he sent that over to quite a few people and wants people's reactions for that. So we're going to try that. Uh, Mark SH. Hello, Mr. Thomas. Uh, how are you? Jonathan, how you doing? Who else have we got? Mandy. Hello, cuz. How are you? Uh, Mandy, that's a five-letter word, not a four-letter word. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here comes the daiquiris. Hang on. I'll scroll back for the daiquiris in a second. Uh, Tim. Tim's in the house. Hey, Tim. Right. Daiquiris. Dax, 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 dax. Face ache. Yeah, Facebook is face ache, isn't it? No one likes face ache. Uh, we've got a few. We've got a few watching on Facebook. God, wow! Look at those numbers on Facebook. That's crazy. Fake right, Josh. Isla Fiji, cracking daiquiri. We like a bit of that. That's a really good daiquiri. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Trevor V. Plantation Isla Fiji was a Maca. Oh, yeah. So both of those. Where's that? So Maca and Isla Fiji. We like the plantation, don't we? Oh, Tim. Tim's up here with Stinky's fancy pineapple. Trevor. ED12 with Demerara. Yeah, nice. Oh, hang on. Dem ED12 with Demerara. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry. Demerara and three star with plain sugar. Yeah, we like that. A good shout. Uh, Jesus, my lord. Oh, here we go. It's a bartender shot. All oh, right, here we go. It's a bartender shot. Not good. Super bitter. Right. Thanks for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tribal's in the house. Hey, Pete. How are you? It's a Basque. What's that? What's that mean? Basque. 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 It's a Basque liquor. Don't even know what that means. Uh, Andy's in the house. Uh, shot of fermented fish. Disgusting. <laughs> oh, is that is that my software's way of doing a little disgusting emoji? <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's so that's my law. I'm going to have a little um, little try of that. Mark SH, another one of my members, has sent me, well, they're both the same. Uh, I've never actually tried it. This is Jack Daniels, and this is the single barrel, but it's the select, okay? Uh, so it's the uh, 45 ABV, so 90 proof. Uh, they do single barrels, uh, 100 proof, and then they do other things as well. So this, effectively, is the next one up from, not that one. Uh, from that one, effectively. So I'm going to do a little side-by-side -side comparison. There we go, that way around. So we're going to have a little bit of Jack, a little bit of Gentleman Jack, and a little bit of um, um, Single Barrel Select. It's quite, 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 quite looking forward to that. And then Trevor V over in Canada, Canada land. Trevor V has sent me a little package, uh, and I haven't opened it, as you can see. It's all sealed. The only thing I've done is just cut that bit there. So I've just got to rip that open. I've got apps. He might have told me. I don't know. I can't remember. For the life of me, I can't remember. But I've got absolutely no idea what's in that box. So we'll get round to that in a minute. Right. Uh, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I want to get. I want to go. Should I have chilled that then? I'm, I'm scared now to do this. Uh, so there we go. Right. I'm just going to. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. So this is. For those that have just joined. This is. I'm, I'm assuming I don't know. I can't. Hang on. Let's get my face out. If I do it in front of my face, it will stop. It will stop uh, focusing on my face, then, won't it? <laughs> no, it won't. Uh, my lord. So right, there we go. Uh, no, I haven't tried any of the smoke whiskey brand. Sorry, Slim Jim. Right, here we go. I'm just going to pour it all in the glass. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to pour a little bit in the glass. Uh, we're going to have a, cause that's quite a lot to go in a glass, and then we're going to have a little sniff. Oh, it's 
that was quite herbal. Sorry, proof. I'm talking proof because I've got a lot of foreigners on. Uh, proof is 70 proof, so 35% ABV. Uh, so, herbal. Reminds me of something. Oh, actually, that's burning the nostrils. <laughs> it's kind of, I want to say kind of like, um, is it wormwood? Kind of like, um, sort of like, um, I'm trying to think what that reminds me of. Like a sort, of, it's not Jägermeister, but kind of like a similar kind of like loads, loads of herbs, and spices. Nothing like Jäger, nothing, absolutely nothing like Jäger, but I don't know, I've got no idea what it is. So, right, do we say, bartender shot, do we shot it, do we sip it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little sip. Wow, that's really bitter. Really, really bitter. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd actually say a lot better than Campari. So, Christmas Sue's. Hang on, I might have to go off camp. No, I... yeah, where's my Sue's? I tell you what, it has got quite of um, a burny, bittery aftertaste. It's not smooth going down. So we know like um, Finet, uh, Finet is like what they call bartender's breakfast. Finet Branca. And that's kind of like, um, well, it's kind of, it's an Amaro essentially, but kind of like um, like herbs, spices, gentian. Suze has got a lot more aromatics to it. Suze is bitter, but it's it's got more sweetness going, a lot more different flavour going down to it. This is really bizarre. It's got a burny bitter to it. I don't, I don't actually dislike that. I don't know how else to describe it. I get wormwood coming through, kind of like very sort of subtle, absinthe kind of no, like not nothing like absinthe, nothing like that at all. But kind of get those. That sort of afternotes going to it. I wouldn't know how the hell to use that in cocktails. Maybe like rinse in a glass. It's not going to it's not going to add much fun to a tiki cocktail. I don't know. I don't know if we got any information coming through from you crazy foreigners that obviously know my law. Oh come on, there's lots of text here. What's going on? Uh, right, let me highlight the questions just for a bit. Uh, I've answered that. Smokehead whiskey brand. No, I haven't tried Smokehead whiskey brand. Um, right, Louise. Lovely Louise. Steve, I've got mango and lime gin. Had a few G&Ts. I like it a lot. Yes, which shoulder is that over? I've got to go back to front on my screen. Let's just come that way. Mango and lime gin. Yes. That's out, isn't it? That video's out. I'm sure it's out. I th I, yeah, I know it's out. Of course it is. That's really good. Right, uh, Trevor. Oh, Trevor's chatting to Pete. That's all right. You guys have a little com conversation. That's cool. RDA. Uh, Pete's talking to Thingy. Right, here we go. Basque. Wiki says Basque absinthe. Wordwood. There we go. I'm quite impressed by that. Wiki says Basque. I've never heard of Basque. I wouldn't even know what that means. I wouldn't. I get, I get what they mean by absinthe. It's not, nothing like absinthe. Absolutely nothing like it. But. You do get very, very sort of subtle, sort of wormwoody notes off there. I, I know what I do want. Hang on, hang on a second. You're going to see my bald head in front of the camera. There we go, right. I, I'm just going for a little comparison to this. Because I've tried this for ages. A little bit of aquavy. Or a lot of aquavy. No. What was I thinking? No. No. That was a that was a stupid stupid comparison. It's kind of got those sort of wormwoody notes to it, but no, the silly comparison. The Suze is a silly comparison as well. It's like Suze is much more, much more floral, more gentian in there. Let's put that away. I don't know. I don't know how I'd use that. That's um. So, Carl, cheers, cheers, Carl, um, for that. I, I've, 
I've no idea what to make make of it. I'm not sure how. Actually, like Campari is quite an obvious one, um, but that's like taking Campari to a whole different level. So I'm not sure. Right. Uh, oh, here we go. Right, John's, John's, John's cutting and pasting. Here we go. The law literally moth herb is sweet Swedish. There we go. Wormwood, which is the key ingredient in a Basque. What the hell's? What's the Basque? Is Basque a cocktail? Is Basque a drink? What is Basque? Basque, as it's got a, a thingy above the A. Bar, Basque, Basque. What? What is it? Uh, Bill, I'll come back to that in a second. Bill, hang on. Uh, I remember to scroll up. I just want to clear this Basque thing up. Just got. Angela's just got Coca Canoe. Woohoo! Uh, Smokehead Super PT. That's Trevor answering that. Watching, just trying to deal with Baby Ash. Mini Ash, how is Mini Ash? Mini Ash has got to be what? Six, I've lost track of time. Six weeks. Six weeks old? It's where you, it's where you say like three months to me now, isn't it? <laughs> can't, Mini Ash can't be that old. Uh, right, Trevor, Pete's talking to Trevor, 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 Ab, oh my word, how do I say that name? Ab, Ab, Abderhan, yeah, hi, thanks for coming on. Right, cool, we got there. So, yes, someone let me know what B-A-S-K B -A -S -K is, Basque, Basque, whether it's a drink, whether it, I've never heard of it, I don't know. A drink, a cocktail, I, I don't know. Someone get on Google and let me know. Right, let's come back to Bill. What's Bill saying? My wife is in Antigua for a few days. Oh, I was going to say, cabin crew. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I go to Cornwall for a few days, but I wouldn't go to Antigua for a few days. Christ, that's a long way to go. Uh, I'm a big rum fan. Have you any Antiguan rum? Is an English... Oh, wow, just done a mental block then. Is an English Harbour Antiguan? Oh, no. Where's, Ant where's English Harbour from? I've got a funny feeling English Harbour's Antiguan. I don't hold me to that though. That might be just I don't know why that came straight off my head. Um if English Harbour is uh, Antiguan, then hundred percent that's a cracking, cracking rum, but I can't think well part of me is now thinking it's Bayesian, Barbados. I don't know why. I don't know why I immediately came out with that. I can't think of anything else. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure Trevor. Trevor Rose will be on that one. Bill. Uh, I'm sure. Hang on. Hang on a sec. I'm sure. I'm sure English Harbour. Uh, why, why did I say English Harbour? Give me two seconds. Uh, Master of Malt. Where are we? Plus Master of Malt. 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 Where's my? Oh Jesus. No. Cancel. Oh. Right. There we go. Right, and yeah, yes, English Harbour. He's nailed it. Look at that. See, that is knowledge bombs. Absolute knowledge bombs. Uh, yes, the English Harbour, hundred percent. Love that stuff. I've demolished my so funny, long, dull, boring story, and I'll make it really short. Where I used to work uh, in Cambridge, or where I used to live in Cambridge, the pub round the corner from me. Any local people, the Maypole. Uh, that you, he used to have both ex uh, both English harbours in there, and we used to demolish it on um, World Cup when Italy won the World Cup. When the hell was that? Two thousand and oh, I don't know. When did, whenever Italy won the, the football World Cup, uh, they're Italian. Uh, we were basically in there all night boozing, and we just demolished that bottle or two bottles of of, of uh, English harbour off. Absolutely uh, amazing stuff. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why I had the mental block. I, I should have packed myself. Um, as for any other Antiguan rum, I I couldn't tell you, to be honest, but definitely English Harbour. Definitely, 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 definitely. Right. Uh, right, let's hide that. Right, any other comments before I move on to the old whiskey? Oh, hang on. Did... Hang on. Um, right, here we go. Has this just come through? Basque is a Swedish spice liquor flavoured with worm. Sweden is one of the few. Basque. Oh, so okay. So it's right. So Basque is a type of drink, as in like an um, Amaro or a vodka or a rum or something like that. Basque is a type of drink. Okay. All right. Uh, cool. We can deal with that. Hang on. Uh, Pete's just saying something else as well. Yeah, they've cut, cut and paste off the same website. 
<laughs> good old, I'm assuming that's Wikipedia. Basque is an alternative spelling of the word besk, which means bitter. Right, okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, oh, Jess is on Facebook. Cutting and pasted. Good old, good old Wikipedia. Yes, we like that. Uh, Bill, English Harbour. See, nailed it. I should have backed myself. Six weeks. Look at that, Ash. Cool. Right. Uh, caught up. Sam Stewart. Hey, Samuel, how are you? Right, let's uh, let's move on to the old whiskey. Cool, I've got to finish my old daiquiri. Uh, how do we hide that? Right, my old dac. This daiquiri is phenomenal. Oh, such a good daiquiri. Oh. Ed, Ed, if you're watching, mate, that's a stunning, stunning rum. Right, uh, let's go, Jack, Jackie D. So, I don't often get a chance to do this. So, a little bit of Jack Daniels. So, this is basic, 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 basic. Good old Jack D. Let's do the old comparison. Gentleman Jack, for those who have never seen Gentleman Jack before. So, that's, um, that's bog standard number seven. This is like posh uh, uh, Jack Daniels. A bit of Gentleman Jack. It's been around quite a few years, Gentleman Jack now. Lots, lots of years. Lots and lots of years. And then... Um, We've got single barrel, but it's the select one. So it's the, the bottom of the, bottom, that sounds a bit harsh. I was going to say bottom of the range um, single barrel. That sounds really harsh, but there, there are better, stronger. I don't know, but there are other single barrels. So this is the next one up from Gentleman Jack. Okay, so it's posher Jack Daniels. Cool, look at the colour of that. Look at anything white. What have we got? What have we got that's white? Don't know if you'll see this. No, that's not. Uh, now I've got nothing that's really white. The difference in colour between that and that, that's. I don't, know whether, I don't know if you'll pick that up. So that's normal Jack Daniels. It's really light and that's like really deep, richy, oak in colour. Mm, right. What have we got, Jack Daniels? Oh, here we go. Look, here comes the banter, innit? Here comes the banter. See, you failed. Jack Daniels is whiskey. It's not bourbon, but it's whiskey. <laughs> Even says whiskey on the bottle, look. See, look, here we go, here we go. Right, normal Jack Daniels. See, I, I quite like that. Approachable, easy drinking. Subtle sort of, well, <laughs> after, after that malort or whatever it is. Uh, I was going to say subtle sweetness, but perhaps it's the bitterness of that that's really killed the palate to make this really sweet. But I, I can't, I do, I do, you know, I do like Jack Daniels. I want to get into bourbons and whiskies, whiskies, bourbons, whatever. I want to, I want to kind of get into them and, and do a little bit of tasting. I've got some uh, American Eagle coming, uh, which is a Haywoods one, and I've heard stories that actually. Uh, that is actually a, a proper US distiller has done that for them. So, kind of subtle, sort of vanillary notes to it. Not massive, but I like that. Uh, Gentleman Jack. Um, the one thing I will say for that, it's not super smooth. It's, it's smoother compared. For me, it's a lot smoother than Jim Beam. The normal um, number seven is it Jim Beam? The white, the white uh, cap one, white label one. Um, it's not kind of as harsh as that, but then, yeah. right, uh, Gentleman Jack, off the nose, completely different nose. I get big sort of uh, vanilla notes off the nose on that. One. Bit of oakiness to it. it just, it's just super smooth. It goes down really, really nicely. As I say, I'm a novice to American whiskey. Uh, I'm a novice to whiskey in general. In in general, to be honest, I don't like scotch. Um, but I'm getting around there, you know, I've, I've done all the basic Americans, but I'm just going to call it, you know, I'm just going to call it whiskey. I've done the loot, I've done Bullet, I've done Woodford Reserve, I've done Knob Creek. Uh, not side by side tasting, I've had like probably a couple at one tasting and then a couple what, a few months later. So I've never ever tasted them side by side to do a comparison. Uh, but there's nothing I really dislike, they're just sort of different. But that, I do like the Gentleman Jack, sort of vanilla mm. Really, I, for me, that's super smooth. So if we're going, 
if we've got things that are even smoother than that, you know, whiskey is going to be a whole gr brilliant journey for me. I can't wait. Now, this little beast. Thank you, Mark. I know you're in the comments, uh, Mr. SH. Oh, here we go. Vino's in the house. Vino can talk all day about Bullet. That's his favourite one, I think. Uh, so this is, I don't know why I'm holding that up. You can't see it. Single barrel select. It's a lot darker in colour. And let's just go through. Hang on, hang on. Let's just go, right, let's, let's clear, clear that. Let's just come back through here. Right, here we go. Thought I was doing right. Sorry, uh, don't know how you drink whiskey. I find it harsh tasting. I think that's the thing. I think if you if you don't if you start off with a a not great for me, my not great whiskey experience was Bullet Orange Label Bullet in the UK. Uh, that for me, I just didn't get on with it at all. And that's probably and bear in mind Diageo brought that over. I don't know, Christ, two thousand and eight. Mate, oh no, earlier than that, 2000 and way earlier than that, 2002, 2003, um, maybe, uh, Diageo brought Bullet over, I just wasn't, my palette was different back then, you know, I just, it just put me off, I wasn't a massive Bullet fan, uh, whether I revisit it these days, I, I don't know, but that's kind of what put me off, um, so yeah, right, uh, right, Trevor, Trevor V, if you don't like whiskey, try bourbon, it was vodka. See, you know, I'm, I just classify, I know it's wrong, I know it is, um, I've got to get my head properly into American whiskey, uh, but for me, I'm just going to call them all whiskey, whether they're bourbon, whether they're not bourbon, you know, for me, for me as a newcomer, and for probably a lot of other people watching my stuff as well, watching my channel, you know, the distinction between bourbon and whiskey is kind of hard to get your head around. I know what the differences are, but to explain it is... You know, it's a bit of a minefield. So, for me, when I say whiskey, I do mean bourbon as well. All right. So, single barrel. Oh, proper, proper sort of oaky on that. I get, I get, oh, this is kind of weird. I get sort of vanilla on that one. But I want to say, almost caramel notes off that. Oh, that's interesting. That's got a lot of right. RD, it's RDA, isn't it? I'm sure it's RDA. Who's who's who have I just been chatting to about? Yeah, right. RDA, right. As my palate's coming round to appreciating whiskey, I'm just going to say whiskey. Uh, appreciating different styles of whiskey. Um, for me, that is a hell of a lot more spicier than what that is. Um, RDA. RDA, what, what the hell's your name, RDA? I know you've told me before, but I've forgotten. Right, RDA, uh, for me, personally, for you to get in the door with smooth whiskey, I 100% would go something like Jack Dan uh, Gentleman, Jack, Gentleman Jack. That is so smooth and easy drinking compared to normal Jack Daniels, and to, compared to that, I, th I think that's probably going to kill your palate if you're not used to it. Um, it's like me going into malt whiskies. I just can't handle malt whiskies. I just really can't handle malt whiskies. They just they just kill me. Um, but I always come back to Gentleman Jack. You know, proper whiskey bourbon fans, and you know they're probably going to hate it. But for me, the that's a brilliant entry level whiskey. But to go up to better whiskies, I think the Gentleman Jack absolutely nails it. But this one has got so much character in it. I love the kind of spiciness to it. And it's completely different for the Spiced Run fans. I'm not talking anything like that, remotely like that. I'm talking proper sort of peppery spice. Definitely caramel notes. You get the alcohol. Oh, I don't know why. Oh, that's 40%. You, for me, that tastes a good 10, 15% stronger ABV, even though it's not. It's only 5%. This has got a lot more alcohol burn to it. But nice alcohol burn. I, do, I could get used to that. I tell you what. I wouldn't, I perhaps wouldn't waste that in an old fashioned, but I could probably get used to that over over an ice cube. Let's have a bit more than that. So for you, right, Mark, if you're in the comments, because I know you're Mark, Mark SH, Mr. Smith Owl, uh, Mark, as, as you're the Jack Daniels, the fan, the single barrel fan, 
give me some idea of bourbons, whiskies, that you would could put that in the same class as. Are we going Woodford Reserve? Are we going uh, Blanton's? What are we doing? I do like a bit of Blanton's. So where, where would you categorise that single barrel amongst other kind of whiskies and bourbons? That would be kind of an interesting one for me. Right. Uh, Nishan. Hey, Nishan. How are you? I managed to get a bottle of single barrel. One of 240. Yeah, they do these limited. I haven't got my head around all the single barrels. They've got like six or seven. And they've got the Sinatra ones as well. Um, they do all these limited releases. This is just a normal single barrel select that's mass produced uh, in the grand scheme. Well, not mass produced like that. Um, but kind of, you know, it's quite easy to get. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hey, Luke, last whisperer. I thought I said Luke then, behind the bold. Uh, yes, Samuel, I, quite, I do agree. You know, Jack Daniels gets a lot of hate, but I, I just think they're brilliant. I just, I, it's entry level. I'm not saying they're the world's best whiskies, but it's entry level. I think they're, I think they're brilliant. I really do. Uh, last whisper. Where we got? Uh, hello, my greeting from Poland. Vodka rules. Oh, vodka, oh, vodka rules. Tim, Tim, you need to say hello. Last whisper, say hello to Tim. Tim, last meet last whisper. You two are massive vodka fans. <laughs> uh, Svino, yes, I did have it. I don't, you know, it's not not horrid. Um, I've had my fair share of Finette over the time, over the years. Um, it's not horrid. Trevor. Yep. Uh, Trevor, your package is up next and try what is in there next to the jack. Okay, all right, all right, we're coming up there. Right, hang on, let me just get through these, make sure there's no there. Kevin, not a whiskey drinker either, still don't get started on rums. Ah, uh, oh, here we go. Let me just see if anyone's answered this. American bourbon is next in my wheelhouse next to rum. Absolutely love bourbon. Nice, okay. See, I've got, I don't know where it's, I don't know where it's gone now. I've got those uh, members. Do you remember me doing that? Um, what the hell was the brand? What was the posh, posh whiskey brand I did over lockdown? Um, trials. Here, this one. Uh, who was it? Mictus. Oh, I loved, I loved Mictus. Oh my word, Mictus was insanely good. Uh, which one was it? I think it was... Oh, it's that one, it's gone. <laughs> Dom... Don Burgess Declaration. I think that was the £130. I don't know why I'm showing you that. £130 one. But I loved, I loved them all. I really did love them. It was that one. That's that's the one. US number one barrel strength rye. 56.9% uh, ABV. So that'll be 114, give or take, 113.8 proof. But really did love the Mictors. And that's a brand new brand to me as well. Mictors. Right. Uh... Elijah Craig, Wild Turkey, two brilliant bourbons. Uh, question, JD, how do you rate JD? I, do you know what? I do see again. I I do really like JD Rye. I, it's very it's spicier for me, and I'm I'm not sure if that's typical uh, for rye. I assume because I'm equating this to vodka because rye-based vodkas have got a lot more spicy characteristics than wheat or potato-based vodkas. And I really love rye-based vodkas. Belvedere, for instance. Uh, I love Belvedere's and they're, they're posh Belvedere's. They are all rye-based vodkas. They've got all those characteristics. And anyone that says vodka, see this is the thing, anyone that says vodka is just vodka, they, you know, they haven't tasted, they haven't done a vodka tasting because there's a whole massive catalog of difference between uh, all the different base uh, crops that go into making vodka, and I absolutely love rye vodkas, love them spits. Potato would be my out and out because they got, get very, very different characteristics, and they're very smooth, creamy mouthfeel. Uh, so I'm equ I'm equating the rye whiskey, as in rye. I'm in, I'm equating that in my head as more kind of spicy than your bourbons. Uh, but if is that if that's generic, I don't know. The Jack Daniels one for me is a lot more spicier than. Um, this sort of stuff, but I do really, really like it. I do. It's where all the, it's where all the Americans are going to uh, kind of uh, smash that now. They're going to say that, right. Uh, What's the best whiskey for whiskey? Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I just use Jack Daniels because I've not really had that. I mean, that would be a great video to do. The best, you know, a whiskey sour or even a Manhattan kind of whiskey off. That would be a great video to do. I'd love to do that. Might do that with my membership. Uh, Trevor's answering that one. Right, I'm going to try and crack on with 
um, other Trevor's little package now. Oh, so see, this is why I love this. Lot, so much, there's lots and lots of education going on here. Not a whiskey fan, finding a drink bought. Will only drink if bought, but got a gentleman's chat really cheap. So much better than the other. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Right, Trevor. Grandad is a great old oh, grandad. I've never heard of that, Trevor V. Never heard of that. Buffalo Trace is amazing. See, Buffalo Trace again for me, I, I don't know what the fuss is about. I really don't. I, and I know Buffalo Trace as well. It's, it's been well regarded over here in the bar scene, um, but it's died off. And I, I think it's just purely um, because I forget who the importers were now, just pushed it into a lot of bars and did brand deals. And I think that's why bartenders were pushing it. I, I personally don't get the whole Buffalo Trace thing. I, it's not one of my favourites at all, really. Um, Right, mixers, mixers, mixers. For me, right, tasting, I know there's a whole golf in price, and because I've just seen mixers pipe up there, Trevor. For me, Buffalo Trace doesn't even come close to the whole mixers. Hang on. Yeah, that's the M. M for mixers. Doesn't even come close to the mixers normal bourbon. You know, it's not even in the same ballpark. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, I really want to get into bourbons. As I'm getting older, I, th I think it's my matured <laughs> drink. <laughs> Right, uh, Samuel. Okay, Rum Balloon Rum is 42. Is that smooth and injet? Right, the big difference is, and this is what I try and drill in. This is the last preaching before I'm going to crack onto this. This is what I try and drill in to people uh, on the spiced rums and all this, that, and the other. You cannot compare spiced rum to rum. It's a completely different thing. And you cannot compare spiced rum to any other category either. Spiced rum is sweetened. It is essentially a liqueur, except for a few brands like Chairman's uh, Reserve uh, and what else have we got? Um, that, they're, they're proper spiced rums. You know, there's no sweetness added to them. So yes, Rum Bullion is going to be a hell of a lot smoother than Gentleman's Jack, purely because of the sweetness that's been added to it. Yeah, it's not, you know, there's no very, very minimal sugars but I'm, I'm sure i'm assuming what there's massive laws and uh rules and regulations with whiskey of what sugars can be added nothing even in the ballpark of what something like rum bullion has got so yes it's going to be smoother purely because there's a lot of sugar a lot of sweetness added to it to mask the taste completely different things it'll be like comparing be like comparing vodka with tequila they're just chalk and cheese completely different things all right so <laughs> You've got to get that out of your head. Spiced rums are just incomparable to anything else. You just take them as sweet rum-based liqueurs. That's all they really are. They're lovely, but they are just essentially rum-based liqueurs. That's all they really are, except for a few small handful of brands like Chairman's Reserve, like Black Tears that I'm looking at. Uh, what else have I done? They're all sort of hidden away now a little bit. Um, Duppy's share is close to being... Uh, a proper sort of rum. It has got sweetness to it, added to it. I mean, Havana, DMFs, they've all got masses of sugar added to them, so you cannot compare them, all right? Right. Uh, mix this, mix this, mix this. Right, Mark's there. I know I'm massively behind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open yours in a minute, Trevor V. Don't worry, don't worry. With the single barrel, I would compare it to Woodward's Reserve. Okay, there we go. More caramel toffee notes. But do love Blanton's. See, I do like Blanton's. Do like Blanton's. Nano ice cubes in there and opened it out. Mellowed it out. Do you know what? I think I actually prefer that neat. I think I prefer the characteristics of that without the ice cube, which is quite interesting. The little bit of dilution actually for me brings out even more spice. I do kind of like it just neat. That's really interesting. So for me, in, in my head then, I'm, not, I'm thinking that that's not going to be a great old-fashioned or Manhattan. That's just great as it is. I mean, in my head, that's where I'm going with that. I don't know right and wrong, but... Right. Uh, Trevor, I don't know that I'll call it fifth. Right. Uh, how do you rate... Uh, I don't... I, hopefully you're talking to someone else. <laughs> Because I don't rate malt whiskey. I can't handle Scotch whiskey. I just don't like peaty Scotch. 
I, d I just don't like scotch whiskey. So I don't like the character profile. I don't like the, the base liquor, whether it's scotch, whether it's malt, whether it's blended, whether it's premium malt. I just don't like scotch whiskey. I just can't handle it. My palate just cannot handle it. Uh, yes, love uh, Zubrovka. It's not, it's not my favourite. You know, it's, it's not up there with my favourite, but it's great. I tell you what, and I know you're from Poland uh, and you're really going to hate me, but there's a Scottish brand uh, in the UK that have kind of taken the whole Zubrovka and done their own take on it, and it's phenomenal. It's called Holy Grass uh, Vodka. It's Dunnett Bay, Dunnett Bay? Dunnett Bay Distillery, anyway. They come in like white porcelain bottles for anyone in the UK. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal vodka. And I do actually prefer that to um, uh, Zubrovka. Nothing against Zubrovka. I do like it. I, I really like it. But, you know, it's not up there with some of the great ones for me. All right. Uh, JD Honey. Right. Uh, God, there's so many cut this stuff. So much whiskey chat going on here. Sorry, Trevor. I'm coming. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there, Trevor. Honey Bourbons, Kentucky. Right. Watch. I watch Mad Men that make whiskey. <laughs> cool cheers samuel thank you very much talica oh talisca oh, oh, oh cool that's no yeah that's proper up there in the whole peaty stuff uh rda i heard that was horribly too strong blew my taste buds yet william fox hey george in the house tamdu yeah it's just whiskey in it it's just scotch right right oh i've caught up with the comments awesome 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 I'll pipe down. Pipe down, posh boy. <laughs> right. Trevor V. All the way from Canada. It took... Where's the postage date on here? I've forgotten. I think it took one month and three days to get here. I think if I'm right in that, one month and three days. So which end did I open? This end. Right. I know it's upside down, but I didn't want to destroy the label. <laughs> so... I've no idea what's in here. If you did tell me, Trevor, I've really forgotten, so I'm really sorry. Right, what have we got? Oh, hello, bloody hell, it's a big bottle here. Right, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I've got a beer, but... Oh, <laughs> is that what I think that is? <laughs> is that, is that tomato? No, it can't be. It can't be, surely. Is that tomato? Clamato. Must be. Tomato. Right. Uh, I'm going to whack that in the freezer. Sorry, I didn't realise there was a... I didn't, I didn't realise there was a beer in there. Uh, so that's that. Right. What the hell is this in here? God, it's exciting. This is a big one. If people want to send me stuff, I'm looking forward to this. Screech. <laughs> that, that brings back memories of, um, <laughs> of uh, Safe by the Bell. Screech. <laughs> right. If people want to send me stuff... I'll, I'll unbox it. Al Ho gets all excited when I do unboxing videos. <laughs> right. Oh, hello, soldier. I've wanted to try this for flipping ages. Ages and ages and ages. Because this is, this is kind of what I don't understand about Diageo. So Diageo, for those that don't know, uh, Diageo is like a, a massive global importer, brand owner, essentially. They own lots of different things. They distribute distribute lots of different things. Talisker is one of theirs. Smirnoff, Gordon's, Bailey's, Archer's, Guinness, all Diageo brands. A lot of whiskies, a hell of a lot of whiskies, Scotch whiskies are Diageo brands. Bullet in the UK is owned by Diageo, and I'm pretty sure Diageo actually own Bullet in the US, I think. Don't hold me to that. I think they do. Now, the one thing I can't get my head around is they really Diageo really do push Bullet in the UK, but in the US and Canada, it's all Crown Royal, and yet they won't pull this over to the UK. They've just got absolutely zero interest in bringing all the Crown Royals over to the UK. Now, especially because there's lots of flavours with Crown Royal as well, I think they'd smash it. I think if Diageo ditched Bullet, or whatever the relationship is there, and just brought Crown Royal over to the UK, I think they would smash it now, because I know whiskey's coming. So, uh, really interested. Don't let me forget the tomato thing in the freezer, because that... Oh, the freezer will be all right. That'll do that. Right. 
Uh, da, da, da. Right, here we go. Right, hang on. Where do we get to? Where do we get to in the comments? Right, hang on. Let me. Right, let me just have a little bit of screech. New found. So screech. New Foundland rum. Is it? Is it a French style of rum? As it's R H U M. Have we got anything rum? Or is it just because you're in Canada? I don't even know where its island is. Is it just because you're in Canada? It's it's multilingual. So if we saw rum R H R H U M in the UK, we would automatically assume it's the French agricole style of rum. Uh, so we've got Ron. So here's some more education for you guys in the UK. We've got three different styles of rum in the UK, and it, this will always be true for every single one of them. R O N Ron is always the Spanish style of rum. So Cuba, Puerto Rico, uh, islands like that. Okay, so Ron, R-O-N. So Bacardi has got Ron on it. It doesn't say rum, it says Ron. So they're Spanish style of rums. Anything that says rum, R-U-M, in the UK is an English style of rum. Barbados, Jamaica, um, Guyana, Trinidad, loads and loads and loads of um, islands and mainland uh, countries as well. R-U-M is an English style of rum. And then we've got R-H-U-M in the UK which would be, uh, it's a French style of rum. So Agricoles, Martinique, uh, Haiti, uh, I can't, what's it, um, other Agricoles? And they're kind of more grassy. Uh, so they're massive different styles between them, Spanish, French, and English, the massive different styles. So I'm assuming that's just multilingual because of Canada's oh, semi-French speaking country as much as English. So I'm assuming that's that, but we shall do this one first. We should do a bit of, bit of this. Uh, I thought we've got 40%, 40% ABV. Right, where do we get to? Uh, Irish. Right, uh, I've got a question here, just while I'm having a bit of this. Hey Steve, I'm wondering if you've ever heard of Shivas. Yeah, Shivas is a blended, so it's posh blended. Again, uh, Diageo owns Shivas in the UK. I've got, uh, to be fair, they are probably the ones that I can handle. I've done a lot of work with Shivas over the years. The, the brand ambassador, the global brand ambassador for Shivas used to live about two or three miles from where I am now. Um, I've known him for years. Um, so yeah, I, I did, I've, the 12, the 18, I did kind of like uh, much better than, uh, I was gonna say Monkey 47, much better than Monkey Shoulder, much better than Jim, not Jim Beam. Who am I thinking of? Big Scotch, uh, Johnny Walker, much better than Johnny Walker. They would be my kind of go-to Scotch whiskies, all right? They're posh blended. Um, so basically to compare them, you're going, you've got your Bells, your Famous Grouse, your Teachers, your whatever, uh, the, the, bl the premium blended Scotches are then going up a level above them. Okay, so they are, some people will argue they're as good as malts because they're blended. A blended malts essentially other people will always say our oh, malts are better than you know premium blended scotches there's there's no right or wrong to that it's whatever your palate there's all they are is a hundred percent better than uh, bells teachers uh, famous grouse all that sort of stuff so right let's clear that one chrono is triggered uh it's your favorite alien with a bowler hat <laughs> what goes well with lemon vodka um more lemon and sugar and make a like a little daiquiri type thing with it. <laughs> uh, Mediterranean tonic, do something like that. Quite, something like quite citrusy. Scritch, I call it T2. Right, let's have a little sip. Oh, that's quite spicy. It's got a bit of spice on the tongue. Um, that's quite interesting. Um, I don't know whether to be brutal or not. <laughs> um, it's not much. It doesn't linger. There's no aftertaste. All, all I've got is the burn on my tongue. Um, very thin. That's the word I'm looking for. When you're comparing it to something like... Uh, I don't even know how to compare, compare that to. I'm kind of getting a little... It's not a spice drum. I'm kind of getting little vanilla notes to it, but nothing like a spice drum. Kind of weak. You get that initial kind of, as soon as you hit your mouth, you get that initial kind of sweetness to it. 
but then it very just quickly disappears because of the alcohol burn from it. Um, I don't know whether to be harsh, but that, <laughs> I'm sorry, Trevor. <laughs> but yeah, that's not that's not a brilliant quality run. <laughs> hmm. Screech, nice. Uh, thanks, thanks, Trevor. Thanks, uh, Kevin. <laughs> so I. Okay. Kevin, you're on beer watch. Right. <laughs> rip Screech. Yeah, Rip Screech. I can't believe Dustin. Dustin. What was it? Dustin Diamond, wasn't it? Dustin Diamond? Di Dustin. Yeah, it's Dustin Diamond. Di yeah, there was. Yeah, Rip Screech. Uh, and anyone that doesn't know what that means, you, you know, you're you're wasted on this channel. Go, go somewhere else. <laughs> right. Uh, question. What? It was a gift from my parents. Still unopened. Hang on. What, what was a gift from your parents? What have I missed? Adrian. 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 Ah, oh, there we go. This one. Uh, wondering if you... Ah, oh, right, okay. So, sorry. Right, that was you that answered that. Right, okay. Cool. Uh, depends where you kept it, really. Uh, it's that, it's that age-old thing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bartenders going on about... Um, random stuff at the moment about how things you know whiskey and rum and all that loses its taste at the end of the day the mass produced ones they've all got antioxidants in them uh, and you know a little fine and stuff just that of course they do um is is a whiskey is like that much in a bottle of whiskey going to change its taste after it will do after a couple of decades, not noticeably, you know, to the uninitiated, uninitiated you're not going to taste the difference after 10 years or so. But the, old, the only thing I will say, if you keep a bottle, so bearing in mind, I've got my big, I think they're 1600 watt lights up here. If I kept a bottle, so these lights go off after a film. If I kept a bottle like that, you won't see it. But if I kept a bottle there for about 10 years or so, the light is just going to do things and they're hot, you know, they're really hot underneath there. So, yeah, it's going to change its taste there. Um, but, you know, if it's kept in a cupboard that's in a room, all right, it might get hot when we have heat waves. But, if you know, if it's kept at room temperature, it's going to be all right for years. Um, stuff like Bailey's. Fruit, the big difference comes with, like, fruit liqueurs and cream liqueurs. Yes, they're going to go off. If, especially if you've got proper fruit liqueurs. They've actually seen real fruit. They are going to not go off, but they're going to, like, like for instance, right, this one. Because of the strawberries in there, and yes, there's alcohol in there, you know, that ain't going to be good for years and years and years. The, the strawberries are just going to uh, go off after a while. But, yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Boffs, drinks, ego tenders are going to go, nah, 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 you know, but it's rubbish. It's rubbish. <laughs> just going to upset a few people now. <laughs> right. Uh, what do we get to? Crown Poirot. Right. Crown, oh yeah, I want to get onto Crown Royal. You can get. Can you? Really? Yeah, but it's not a UK pro. Yeah, this is the difference. It's not a UK product, is it, George? It's it's you can get it, but uh, it's imported. It's not. Um, Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, so yeah, you, you can you can get it. You'll be paying the importation fees and all that malarkey. It won't be the price that it should be because it's not a UK product. Um, right. Hang on. Facts. Crown. You never... <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what you want to do, Samuel. Go onto Amazon Prime. I'm assuming you're in the UK. Go onto Amazon Prime and watch Bar Rescue. You'll see it in every flipping episode. <laughs> Good old John Taffer. He's supported. I think. I think. I think he's supported by Picardi more than anything these days. But yeah, he's um, bless him. <laughs> he loves a bit of Crown Royale. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Is it glass or plastic bottle with a screech? This is plastic. It's plastic. Plastic, plastic, plastic. Didn't know that about spellings. What? I oh, was that way was hang on, we were talking about that the other day, weren't we? Is that what you're talking about? The old whiskey whiskey with an E, or has someone else been saying that and I've just missed it in the comments? Basically basically the if we're talking about E with the 
whiskey, what the difference is between Irish, Scotch, Japanese. Uh, the best way, the easiest way to remember it is if there's an E in the name of the country, there's an E in whiskey. So um, America has got an E in America, so they've got an E what, in their whiskey. Scotland hasn't got an E in it, so therefore the whiskey is without an E. Japan hasn't got an E in the name, so therefore their whiskey is without an E. Ireland has got an E in it, so their whiskey with an E. All right, so that's the best way to uh, best way to easily remember it. That's not why, but that's the way to remember it. <laughs> the whole why is is basically down to Ireland. <laughs> uh, right, that's answering that. That's answering that. Teachers are pure evil. Uh, Oh, hang on. There's, lot, there's lots of knowledge bombs coming here. So Screech is famous for being how you get initiated as a new fan layer. I've got, yeah. Kiss off card. Right, okay. Hide down. Tried coconut. Cool. On my cards. Right. Yeah, crown is not supported in the UK. Yeah. Well, it's not supported because it's, it's just not a, a UK product. It's not imported, you know. It's not, no wholesaler has the rights to import it into the UK. And that's, and I'm sure that's down to Diageo. Uh, and again, it comes back to why the hell don't Diageo bring it over here? Is it purely because they don't want to rain on um, bullets? Pray? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I've had many chats with Diageo people and they've all given me different answers. I, I don't, I don't know. Hey, Razor Light Mike, long time no see. Uh, Missed the whole show, but you're going off soon. Blah blah blah. Right, cool, cool, cool. Right, let's call up the comments. Have we got a? F yep, we've got a little. That's all right. We can do that. Crown Royal. So, good old Canadian whiskey without an E because there's no E in Canada. Uh, Forty percent ABV. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you, Trevor. Oh, I just smelt it. Oh. Yeah, it's one of these. Because I've known of Crown Royale for decades and never had the fortune to really try it because I've never really wanted to pay four times the price of uh, what it's actually worth, uh, I've just been I've just wanted to try it because I know it's a well-loved brand. So uh, let's get rid of uh, that. When I work... Oh, hang on. George is asking... I forgot you worked for the show. When I worked for Diageo, they always said, don't talk about it as we don't feel the place. I reckon, though, with whiskey that's coming, I, re I reckon they're going to have to rethink that in a year or so, 18 months, especially with Jim Beam up there going, Jim Beam, Jim Beam have delisted Maple, Maple in the US. That's really shocked me. And I, that, so they, they brought it over to the UK and it lasted all of eight months uh, back in 2014. 13, 14, 14, 2014, 2015. They brought it over to the UK. It lasted all of like eight months uh, and then they very quickly delisted it. But they kept rolling it out in the US and all of a sudden they delisted it. They've stopped producing it last year. Gutted. I thought they might bring that back, but hey-ho. Right. Carl. Ah, oh, Carl. Carl. Carl's on Faceache. Carl, come over to YouTube. Stop being on. Don't be on Faceache. That's a bit dull, isn't it? Right. Quick pop in to... To so what see what goodies you've got. Right, okay. Right. Hang on, if I miss something, has Vino got gossip? What's Vino gonna what's Vino talking about? Is Vino dropping knowledge bombs somewhere and I've missed them? Right. Oh Carl's on Facebook. Carl's on YouTube now. Hello Carl. Right. Oh ho, what, what's he saying? What's what's Vino what's Vino sort of saying about? I don't know. Like, what's it has he got knowledge bombs to share? Come on, Vino, share some knowledge bombs. Vino, 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 Vino. Right, let's try the Crown Royal. Oh, it smells. It smells quite nice. I like that. I like that a lot. It's almost got... um. I kind of, this is going to be really bizarre now. It's almost kind of got like a little honey aftertaste to it. Maybe vanilla, but probably, probably for me, honey notes to it. 
kind of really sp that's a lot of smooth so price what i don't know how that compares in the us and canada obviously but i don't know how that compares but if they're like for like if they if it's the same market that they're going for crown royale smashes jack daniels i'm not sure which one's jack daniels now Jack Daniels is more, it's nice, but it's, it's more uh, kind of spicy notes, harsher. I want to say hard, and that's not being harsh on, on Jack Daniels, because I really do like Jack Daniels. This is such an easy sip and drink. I'd actually compare that to Gentleman Jack, to be fair. I don't know which way around it was now. That's Gentleman. Yeah, that's Gentleman Jack. I would put Crown Royale up with the whole Gentleman Jack thing. That's definitely, that's definitely Jack Jack. Let's put Jack Jack there. I like that. Uh, should, should, I, should I be liking it? Should I not? Is that... I don't know. That's just kind of... And that make, I really do want to try their flavours. I think Crown. I think I'm right in saying this, and the Americans, Canadians might say I'm wrong here. I think Crown Royal, Crown, Crown Royal. I think they were the first ones to do the whole flavoured whiskey thing. I think it was Jim Beam that jumped on the back of Crown Royal. I think Crown Royal did the whole apple. Um, I forget what the first ones were. And peach, I think I'm sure Crown Royal were the first ones. Jim Beam followed suit very, very quickly in about 2012, 2013 with the Red Stag, where Jim Beam's first was Red Stag. But I think Crown Royal were the first ones to do it. Interesting. Right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So where 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 are Vino's Vino's Cinnamon? Oh, hang on. Right, I missed I missed in loads of comments here. Club snogs. What's club snogs? Who's snogging in clubs? Well, I think I've missed a conversation here. There's like snogging in clubs and everything going on. <laughs> right, here we go. John. Does your Jim Beam maple still have limited edition on the front or did you manage to get an imported bottle from the US? <laughs> Because if it's still got if it's still got limited edition on the front, that was the batch that was uh, distilled and imported to the UK in 2014, 2015. Um, I I I think it's great. I I don't know. I basically I just think Jim Beam were probably five years too early to the party, maybe four years, um, and that's why it didn't go. The UK wasn't ready for flavoured whiskey because we weren't ready for all the, the all the bourbons and the um, Irish that's coming through now. We just weren't ready for it. Um, we were spiced rum, you know, we were firmly in the spiced rum thing, but flavoured whiskey, I, yeah. so I, I get why it didn't go, but I, I don't know why they did list it. I, I don't know, I don't know. Cinnamon, I don't, I don't get cinnamon. I know you've said that. <laughs> I get I get honey and I get spice. I, I don't know. I get honey sort of spice on it. I, I kind of like that. I, I, that. That could be a very easy sipping. Feels pretty. That's oh, just me, isn't it? It's just new, something new and shiny. It feels kind of premium to me as well, when they're like a nice bottle. Well, hang on, hide that. V, v, oh, here we go. Here's the gossip. Here's the conversation I was missing. Vino was saying he kissed worst... I still don't know what that is. <laughs> right, here we go. Uh, I used to like Jack Daniels a bit once I sampled many other bourbons. I quickly left Jack. Yeah, that, 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 you know, I'm, it's not the best. I'm not saying it's the best. It's a brilliant entry level. I, I you know, that I, I am going to put, do you know what? I am actually going to defend those. I'm going to put those up there with any whiskies. Uh, but Jack Daniels number seven is just a fantastic entry point for the UK market. Um, I, I think that's smashing. For other whiskies that they market in the same class, like Jim Beam, white label, whatever it's called, Jim Beam original, I forget what it's called now. Bullet, um, 
probably even Wood, uh, not Woodford, um, what we talked about, Buffalo Trace, although Buffalo Trace is a few pounds extra. Uh, I think Jack Daniels is the accessible point. I think it is. But once you've got, got into that, it's like it's like with spiced rum. You know, people start off with Captain Morgan Spiced or Morgan Spiced or whatever, and then they go off into different things. You know, they, they start, but they start off with Captain Morgan's. Of course they do. Rum lovers probably started off with Captain Morgan's. Let's, let's be honest, I did. Back in all those 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that was my first thing. Captain Morgan's Dark, that's down there now, was, you know, what I have to thank for getting into rum. But you very quickly learn that there's better things out there. But, yeah, quite happily drink that. Right, hang on. Right, so let's come back to this. If you're ever in Diageo head office, they have a shop and Crown used to be in there for super cheap. Wow, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Trevor, Trevor nailed it. Yeah. Uh, cool. Right, out, Trevor. Crown is okay. The only problem is after tasting bourbon rye, etc. Yeah, I get now. I get that because if I'm going up a level, and I would say everything I've got here at the moment is still not on par with mixers. Mixers for me is is like the next run up, rung up. And if I'm going to compare that to the mixers. You know, there's no comparison. But I'm comparing that to entry level sub £25 in the UK bourbons, whiskies, whatever you want to call them. That's that's where I'm going to put that. Anything under 25 So your Woodford, your probably even Woodford to be fair, depending on what price you're paying. Your Bullets, your uh, Buffalo Trace, your Knob Creek would even kind of go in that bracket as well. Although Knob Creek, you'd probably put up against Gentleman, not that. Um, but mi mixes is different gravy. Mixes is proper wow, and that's kind of the experience I want to go on. I want to go. I want to go that next level. I want to find my. I like. I love Blantons. I want. Um, I love Woodfords. I want to go on that kind of journey. I want to kind of find those ones. Uh, right, hang on. <laughs> so here we go, John. You can answer that question now. I forget who it was now. Uh, maybe RDA said, is it going to go off? Yeah, my JD, JB Maple is limited edition. That was distilled 100% in 2014. Has it gone off? So that is, where are we? Six, seven years old, nearly. It was distilled mid-2014 because they shipped it over and we we did, I was part of the big launch and that, and I'm sure it was mid to, um, mid to, mid to late August time, we did the, um, what do they call it, the rollout of, of it. I was part of the launch, the tasting that they did around the country. Um, and I swear, I th I'm sure it was 2014, 2015. So that's when that was. All right, so does it go off? Can you still taste maple in it? If you can, that's just proof that after, even after six, seven years, you know, it's still fine. All right. Because they only ma they made two runs of it and that was it. They, didn't, they purely didn't make it again because it didn't sell in the UK. Uh, and people, and that's what cracks me up. People say, oh, you can still get it. You can still get it. Yeah, you can. St still stocks of that limited. I think uh, Whiskey Exchange might still have a few. There are still stocks of that limited edition. Uh, even though they might have changed the thumbnail, the, you'll get the limited edition. There's still stocks of that in the UK. Bearing in mind it's seven, six, seven years old. Right. Uh, I'm just I'm just holding out for time. I'm ho hoping that uh, the freezer is going to be doing its work in there. Those Canadian version of Crown not coming on the purple sack. I don't know what that means. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yes, gentlemen, Jack is good. One, oh, I love that. Yep, cool. Right, no vino. Right, uh, let's scroll through. No purple sacking. Purple sack is is that like premium? Is that what you get in the US? Does Crown Royale come in a, a purple bag, much like Pampero. Pampero Anniversario comes in like a leather pouch. Oh, it's good. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh look, more Canadians are in the house. Hey, Christine. Uh, four Roses. See, Four Roses is not a massive deal over in the UK. Um, it's here. It's under. It's the same people. Maker's Mark. That's another one. I mean, isn't it Maker's Mark? I'm sure Maker's Mark. Oh. Sure, it's the same people, was it not? I'm sure it is. Don't know. Right, well, I've got JD Apple, but I haven't opened it. Elijah Craig. Yeah, Elijah's good. 
Not tried the other two. Basil Hayden Booker's. Not seen them. Uh, I've had Elijah Craig, though. I forgot about that. That's did quite nice. Angela drinks Perno. Old fashioned Christine. Right, there we go. JD and Apple would be lovely. Gentleman Jack is smooth. Right, hang on. Uh, right. Yeah, I look, if you're going to, so for me personally, if you're going to start out and you've got the budget, I would 100% go for something like that. Because I think if you if you want to sample neat whiskey, um, to the uninitiated, I think you're going to be, look, if you want, if you're going to drink Jack, if you're going to drink whiskey and Coke, if that's your thing, then just start off with Jack Daniels. But if you're going to go neat and want to appreciate something neat, I would 100% start with that from what I've just tasted. Uh, maybe Crown Royale from what I've just tasted and then you can kind of go from there if you're going neat that would be my kind of thing um, I've done J I've done Jim Beam single barrel I've done Jim Beam I've got what else have I got here they're in the fatter bottles I don't know what they are it's Jim Beam's single barrel which is black and then there's another Jim Beam I forget what it is now I can't see it um, and again they're, they're nice but they've got a bit more bit more to them than kind of that and i just think that's kind of a really tasty there we go holding up but just really kind of tasty easy drinking mellow whiskey um right uh oh yes sorry i didn't reply jonathan yes i did see that uh, i think that's the day i'm going to pull i think uh i'll i'll message you we haven't set anything in stone yet but i think that's the day the day you're free i think is the day that uh i'm in pool but I'll let you know. We'll keep you posted. Right. Uh, da, da, da. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ross has answered that. Right. Uh, Most bourbon have entry level and a few higher end releases. Cart strength. Yeah. The one thing, I, me personally, one thing I would say is if you're starting out, stay away from cask strength and all those kind of things or single barrels and all that because they, they will have a lot more flavour to them. And if you're, and that's a good thing. But if your palate is not used to that, that's going to be a massive jump from whatever you're used to drinking. That's going to be a huge jump. All right. So kind of stick with the whole blended, mellow, easy drinking kind of thing. You don't want to go too cheap because too cheap will be kind of um, harsh. Um, but yeah, I kind of, I kind of. Once you get kind of accustomed to that, then you can go into your single barrels because then they'll do barrel swaps with maybe sherry, with maybe um, again that won't be bourbon can't use that. But I, oh, I don't know. What's? Hang on, hang on a second, hang on a second. So bourbon, one of the rules about bourbon, it has to be in brand new barrels, doesn't it? So. I'm trying to get my head around this. So hang on, I know some barrels, some some whiskies are doing barrel swaps. They're using sherry cask. So then, then that that's not a bourbon. That's just pure whiskey. Interesting. My little my little brain's just gone there. I'm sure that's right. Bourbon has to be in brand new barrels. I'm sure that's right. Purple bags, wheeled. Eagle rare, rare, rare. rare. Right, uh, let's, let's get into the old Jim Beam. It tastes great. I had it neat and old-fashioned. I still taste it. See, this is what I mean. You know, seven, so seven years old. Seven years old, still doing the rounds. Is your products going to go off? No, of course they're not. Fruit, high fruit content, yes. Anything else, no. Is it going to evaporate? No, unless you put it under a heat lamp or constantly in like 28, 30 degrees. No, of course it's not. Especially if you've got the bottle on it. There's nowhere for it to evaporate to. Uh, the lid on it. Uh, oh no, Carl. Yeah, don't be paying that, Ross. Ross, you're my main man, Ross. I'm sure. I'm sure we don't pay that for Gentleman Jack. I'm sure it's like mid twenties, isn't it? When it's on offer. Uh, K, hey K, come on, come on to YouTube, Craig. K, 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 come over to YouTube. The rest of the gang can't chat to you if you're on Facebook. Uh, Hague, yeah. See, Hague is a Scotch, and you know I'm not a huge. They, they have just released that orange, which isn't getting much love around the UK. But, um, yeah. Trevor's there. Uh, 
haven't adjusted the price. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I know it's not a bourbon. I'm, there's other brand, uh, brandies. Is that a whiskies that I'm thinking of that are bourbon that have done barrel swaps? And I can't for the life of me think who I'm thinking about now. But I'm sure someone's done barrel swaps. I, in fact, I'm pretty sure Jim Beam have done barrel swaps. And Jim Beam is a bourbon. So does it, it ceases to become a bourbon when they do a barrel swap, surely? Surely. So, yes, George. I did know that, George. And I don't think I ever classified that as a bourbon, did I? I just called it a whiskey. So don't, don't, be, don't be all ego tenderish on me, otherwise I'll slate your sugar-free syrups. <laughs> uh, there we go, Ross has got the offers. <laughs> Wow, 90 Canadian. Right, okay. Blum, blum, blum. Okay, there is Hagis single barrel, so no gel. Just come on. Hey, yeah, Hagis Scotch though. It's not. It's not American. It's Scotch. It's made in Scotland. Well, I don't actually know where it's where it's made. To be fair, but it's Scotland Scotch whiskey. Uh, right, you're all chatting to each other. JD is 100% bourbon, just made in Tennessee, not Kentucky. Low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, see, you, you and George can. George, George is like a George is like a proper ego tender. <laughs> you can you can have you can have arguments between each other, but yes, technically JD. For those that don't know, JD is not a bourbon legally, even though it is a bourbon by all other stretches of the imagination. It's just legally not a bourbon, um, because they get all whiskey. It's like the rum geeks in in over here and around the world. They get all pretentious about their products, you know. And they have to. Right, I'm hoping that this Bud Light is going to be... I really do like the Crown Royal. That's kind of... That's really... I really do like that. Right. How... Border North East. Hello, my friends. Right, how chilled is this? Woohoo! That is proper, proper chilled. Look at that. Look at that. Kevin will be like, oh, he's getting close. He's got 13 minutes. I wouldn't let it go past half past nine. Oh, right. So, my first, so for everyone else, right, hang on. Four Roses. Is, that, is, is Four Roses that he, he's part of the, um, I can't even think who it is now. My, my little brain's gone. Who imports all the, um, is it High Spirits? It's not, of course it's not. Who who does all the Maker's Mark stuff? And all that. It comes out, and what's the name of the, the brand? Because it's all the same people. There's so many whiskies. Like Knob Creek, I'm sure is part of the Maker's Mark gang. I'm sure it is. I just forgot who they are. Right. Uh, hang on. See, right, someone just very, because no one, no one answers. Yes, there we go. I thought that was, sorry, I was just going to say no one's answered me. Whoops, see. There we go. So yeah, bourbon, you know. So right. So this is where because I've not really looked into this, I've not really even thought about this until tonight. Um, so bourbon brands that are doing um, cask swaps, like sharing. There's a whole new thing. The Scotch obviously started this. Glenmorangie started this. Christ, those donkeys years ago. But bourbon whiskey, American whiskey, are getting into this now. The whole cask swaps, especially plantation, are doing massive things with whiskey fans now. And whiskey are doing it the other way. Uh, so whiskey are taking the rum uh, barrels that have been used to, to age whiskey. So it's all going backwards and forwards there to, to kind of give different characteristics. But surely a bourbon, a bourbon brand, when they do a cask swap, surely that ceases to become a bourbon then. It has to be a, a, a whiskey. It's, I'm, I'm, that's, I've never really thought about it, but yeah, I'm going with that. Uh, Anything over an hour. It depends what temp Kevin, it just depends what temperature your freezer's at, isn't it? Just depends. And and also fizzy and alcohol content. <laughs> fever, fever tree tonics will freeze uh, a lot quicker than what beer will. So. Right. Makers, there we go. Beam Suntory. There we go. There we go. Right. So. Uh, how are we doing this? What glass are we going for? What's a nice glass? I want a nice glass to enjoy this from. Uh, I can't, oh, let's, let's just go for, let's just go for this. I should have stuck that in the freezer as well, shouldn't I? Failed. 
Failed. Right, oh, sorry, jo I, I missed... Jo I'm sure Jordan commented up here somewhere. And then everyone scrolled through it. Wardle North East, Wardle North East, where are we? I'm, sh I'm sure... I saw you comment, and then it disappeared off screen. There it is. Right, hang on. What was... Oh, Pappy, bit of Pappy. Yes. Right. Right, okay. So that's that's what he said. Right, hang on. Next time you do one of these videos, I'll send you some in as thanks for the great content. Ah, oh, virtual cuddles. Right. Right. I, I can't say I'm looking forward to this at all. It's freaking red. <laughs> well, it's kind of... Jesus Christ. So let's let's hold this up to let's let's get rid of this. So we can all see. It's my first ever experience of a like a yeah. For those of you who haven't gotten done, tomato. It's basically tomatoes shit. Alright, so yeah. So Malort uh you know, I it was passable. I wouldn't say it's on my top hundred spirits, but it was passable. I'm not sure this is going to be the same. Look at the colour of that. The froth. Oh, hello. Is this the thing? Can you? Are you telling me that you? When you go to your super, well, I don't know what you lot do. When you go to your supermarket, so we we go to our supermarkets, we get all our beer and stuff like that. When you go to your stores, your liquor stores, is that is that a thing? Do you get like cases of that? So four percent, and. For some silly reason, they're 355 mils and not 330 mils. See, again, why do we do 330 mil over here in the UK and then over there, over the pond, it's 355? I never do understand that. Right. Can I be honest? I do actually quite like a, a decent Bloody Mary. Big Tom, don't faff around. Big Tom, I would actually go tequila, personally. Big Tom and, um, like, tequila, I actually quite like. I'm not averse to tomato. Um... George is sitting there in anticipation, thinking, oh, let's put some bacon syrup in that. No, we're not. I would flip and well drink that. Not with that. That's really weird. It's kind of like a thin tomato-y beer. I really enjoy that. I'm quite happily drink that. It's got all the spot. I don't know where. Hang on. I might have to do a real close up here. I don't know. Can we see? Where's it focusing? Is it focusing? My face. It won't focus if my face is there. Can we see all the. Uh, it's got little bits in it and spice, especially around the rim. Can we see all the spices and all that? Mummy Barman, if Mummy Barman's still watching me, she's sitting in, she'll probably be sitting in the room in there, throwing up in her mouth now. <laughs> I, could, I could quite happily drink that. Is that better than a Bloody Mary? I like the beer taste to it. There is quite a healthy beer taste to it, which makes me kind of want to play with... Um, like UK beers, like Camden and uh, Adnum's Dry Hop Lager and things like that. So, Clamato Clamada. So I'm assuming that's a brand, Mott's Clamato. Of course it is. Uh, so water, in that is water, tomato paste, sugar, citric acid, blah, 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 blah. There's no other blurb on it. But I, I you know, I'm... If I, so if I had a heavy night, I'd get my scrambled eggs. I would totally have that with my scrambled eggs on toast in the morning. 100%. That's, that's really shocked me, actually. I wasn't expecting 
I wasn't expecting to like that at all. I'm quite happy. I'm actually gutted. I've only got one of those. Oh, here she comes. Right, she won't come on. She won't come on. Uh, try it. Come on. Come on, try it. See? No, 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 no. Try it. We'll, we'll get the sound effects. <laughs> oh, that's the best I need. What? Go on, off you go. Go on, off you tuddle. Why she can't hear me? What I need to do? Oh no, she's watching. I need to get like a secret camera angle there. I can just pop on. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't a fan of that. But then she doesn't like tomato juice. Do you know, I've, I, I want to say, right, that could become a quite a decent huge thing in the UK. Because the bloody Mary, we, we, we've got a whole brunch culture in the UK, and I'm sure we have around the world, but it's a big brunch culture in the UK. So breakfast, mid-morning mid breakfast and things like that, especially on a Saturday after a heavy night on a Friday. And for me, on a Sunday, I did like, used to love the whole brunch thing before COVID. It's got gas, it's got gas, and I really don't, I can't handle my gas stuff too much these days. So that's repeating on me a little bit. I'm really sorry. But that's not because I dislike it. It's just because I can't handle gas too much these days. That's really, I actually really like it. I'm a big fan of that. It's really weird because you get you get the beer notes. You do get bit in this bun. It's Bud Light. You get the beer notes coming through, but the tomato. It's like a thin tomato with the spot. Yeah, I, I big fan. All right, big fan. Right, hang on. I've I've been not been paying attention to the banter. There must be banter going on now with this. Right, I saw that. I saw uh, Ross going. Um. <laughs> right. So we're still talking bourbon. Right, full rum. Right, here we go. I have not seen this. So full rum to whiskey is doable. But in the right steps. Yep. Completely agree. It's actually Clamato. I don't know what that means. What's what? What's it's actually Clamato. I don't, know, I, don't know what, I don't know what that means. I don't know. Trevor, 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 Trevor. Ruh. I don't know what that means. What's that mean? Uh, I'd love to be able to jump between them all. Right, okay, they're chatting, blah, blah, blah. Beam, Suntory. Oh, I saw that, didn't I? I'm sure I saw this. Right. Uh, it's going to be... Is this going to be like tomato snaps? And more tomato sweet. What's tomato snaps? I don't know what that is either. It's not that chewy. Honestly, it's actually really nice. This, right, for those of that are coming down to imbibe, uh, this this needs to be the call first thing in the morning. Monday morning, pre, pre imbibe. That's the call. I'm calling it. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, what's Louise saying? Basil, basil sugar syrup with tomato beer. I've got some basil sugar syrup. Some basil, sorry, sorry for the fully uh, foreign contingent. Some basil. <laughs> how how do you how do you foreigners out and out, and I'm, I mean Canadians and Americans? How do you get basil out of that? B a s i l. How do, how the hell do you get basil out of that? It's basil. Oh, hang on. It's not meant to replace a Bloody Mary. That Caesar. This is beer. So what's this meant to replace then? What is this? I'll totally have that instead of a Bloody Mary. This is beer. So what? So, so what? What's the whole marketing thing behind this? Then when would you have this? Because for me, that's breakfast brunch. So when? What? I don't. I don't understand. It's not meant to replace a Bloody Mary, right? Okay. Get a normal bud, mix it with tomato puree. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't taste. It wouldn't taste different. I think even if you mix Big Tom, I might try that. Actually, I might get a, bo bo a bottle of Big Tom. I think you'd have to go like Big Tom Lager. 
That's kind of what I'm thinking. Like Big Tom tomato juice lager. That's kind of the ratio I think this is. No, I'm not. What are you not, George? What have you been? Are you not? Did I call you posh boy, ego tender? Is that what you're replying to ages ago? I think you are, if that's what you're replying to. See you later, Pete. Thanks for coming. It's beer and Clamato, just not beer and tomato juice. Yeah, but, you know, same same difference, isn't it? Just not beer and tomato juice. To us in the UK, it's the same flipping thing. All right. Most of drink, Re reconstitute tomato juice, concentrate sugar, which is flavour of spice, to clam broth, yeah. Yeah, see, same, same difference, same difference. Look at, look at you with your going, yeah, but you're still not answering the question. Oh, hang on a minute, tomato stamp. You're still not answering the question. I, I don't care what, I know what clamato is, I know it's clam juice. Uh, but it's still tomato juice at the end of the day. If it's not replacing the Bloody Mary, what's it replacing? What What's the whole idea of the drink? When? Do you, like, cognac is a digestive after dinner. Um, you know, a daiquiri for me is pre-dinner, like mid-afternoon. Daiquiri for, for me is shots to get the night started. You know, so what what is the whole point of this drink? When would you have it? You can't, it's, um, it can't be like a six, seven o'clock at night drink. It's got to be a breakfast drink. It's got to be a brunch drink. Hang on, Trevor's, Trevor's sliding into my DMs now. Watch Trevor slid into my DMs. He's still typing. Yeah, so, you know, he's sending me pictures of Clamato. So, yeah, I get I get what it is, but what's it replacing? What's the whole idea? What's the, what's the ethos behind the drink? We don't... Mix around, cool. Cheers, Trevor. Right. Tomato shandy. Um, up for it, Louise. Snaps. I think I. I think now you've said that. I think I kind of do remember what that is. Clamato, clamato is the same as tomato juice. So yeah, right. Okay, it's a hangover drink. Okay. But, the, but what's the, but that's the whole point, that's what I'm saying, that's the whole point of a Bloody Mary. The Bloody Mary is brunch, hangover juice. You wouldn't, you wouldn't normally have a Bloody Mary if you've not been on the sauce the night before. That is the whole point of a Bloody Mary, is to kind of put you right again, to sort your stomach out. So they are, in essential, the same thing, they're doing the same job. You know, you don't have a Bloody Mary to your night off. You have a Bloody Mary to kind of sort yourself out after the night before. So they're the same. That's what I'm saying. Or do you not? Yeah. Am I just arguing with myself? I'm sure someone said that that's not replacing the Bloody Mary. Well, it is, sort of, surely. Am I just arguing with myself? Is that all I'm doing? <laughs> so... Um, thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll hang around for a bit. Hey, Waleed. Uh, I'll hang around for a bit. I'm not in a hurry to disappear. But yeah, thank you very much, um, Mark SH, to Carl, to Trevor V for sending that in. Trevor V, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I'm just just for that alone, thank you very much. And and that, to be fair. But um, yeah, big, big, big thank you for that. Um, we'll, we'll chat on Discord. I'll sort you some UK goodies out if I can work out. The price is ridiculous for me to send stuff over to the for Canada. Absolutely ridiculous. Right. Uh, well, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I absolutely sit on the patio at 5pm. Oh, see, I wouldn't do that. Well, I don't know. If it's a bit cold. Well, this, this is pretty cold, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure this would be an afternoon drink for me. Don't get me wrong, I, I don't dislike it, but I can't see my, I can't see anyone in the UK having that really at kind of mid-afternoon, early evening. Me personally, that just kind of fill me up before dinner, tea. Interesting. Uh, 
uh, prefer, <laughs> vino, prefer bacon and egg and cheese sandwich from my scrambled eggs vino scrambled eggs do you know what i haven't done though this might be quite funny now i'm talking about it uh yeah here he comes there here he, he's right on point george do you know what i've not done i've not put bacon syrup in my scrambled eggs that could be interesting that might be a little project for not tomorrow uh but tuesday or wednesday <laughs> <laughs> I definitely ain't going to put bacon in this. Not a chance. Uh, right, hang on. Hide that. What's... This seems to be what I would drink with a cigar. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. that I, I really don't think this is a tea time drink. I might have got... I might have misgaged 25 years of hospitality and serving and stuff i might have just completely misgaged the market but i really don't think this is a goer for an evening drink massively in the morning with cigars i don't know hmm. <laughs> yeah nailed it pretty much nailed it um it's it's way way too heavy for an evening drink way too heavy My wife drinks beer and clam exclusively. What's that mean? As in, that's all she, she drinks them together. Like, I know you make your own, so that's all she drinks, just beer with Clamato juice. Uh, I think <laughs> I think he needs to, to try that, George. Get some bacon syrup. No, 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 no. We're not putting bacon syrup in that. Try to make cocktails with red wine. Yes. Yeah. See, yeah, exactly. Vino, I'm Vino, I'm a hundred percent with you there. Hundred percent. I I'm gonna do some research now. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and see what the marketing spiel for that is. Um, because I do not believe for one minute any more than like one percent of I'm going to go, I'm going to stick my neck out. 5% of people that buy that, I don't think any more than 5% of the people that buy that or whatever other brands are, would have it in the evening. It's a morning thing. Surely it has to be. It has to be. He says claiming to, as an English person, claiming to know the Canadian market. <laughs> oh, laughs and giggles. You Canadians, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, right, hang on, Trevor. So Trevor, so bearing in mind, okay, so I, I'm I'm guessing that bearing in mind, I've, no, I've had Clamato. We get Clamato juice over it. Uh, I'm guessing that this Bud Light, just to give you a rough idea, English guys, I reckon that out of that glass, I reckon that that's probably beer. And then that would be Clamato juice because it's not that thick. Um, so Trevor, would you? How would you make it? Half and half, uh, one third beer to two thirds Clamato, or what? Or two thirds beer to one third Clamato? Trevor Rose, uh, how do you make your own? What's the what's the sort of ratios? Right. Uh, what else do we do? Where sells the Smirnoff flavors other than the US? Um, you get a couple in the UK, but again, more in the US. Um, and again, oh, Sp ooh, Spain. Spain, Spain do. Uh, and I know that because I beef her. <laughs> I beef her and Mallorca and that, I know they do. So Spain is a big market for the, um, the Smyrna flavours. Uh, I can't think of anywhere else off the top of my head. Right, uh, Claire, 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 drinking that before a prof. Yeah, no, it's not. You know, it's not going to get you drunk. It's only four percent ABV, uh, but it's just you know, it's just going to fill you up. You're not going to. You're not going to be able to fit much more in after you've had that, <laughs> especially if you're on the sort of porn star martini, the thicker cocktails as opposed to the the light daiquiris and all that sort of stuff. 
mojitos. Mojitos are kind of like mojitos, daiquiris, gin and tonics. Yes, they've got bubbles and a bit of gas to them. Or gin and tonics have. But you know, they're not going to fill you. That's heavy, fizzy. Whereas, you know, gin and tonics, mojitos are kind of light, easy drinking. So, uh, Slim Jim. I'm Northern, so dinner is 12 p.m. And... <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I'm as far south as you can get, and I, I, I say lunch and tea. I don't do, well, dinner. Din yeah, dinner for me would be five o'clock as well. Dinner and, dinner and tea are the same thing, but I do say tea. I don't say dinner. I say, to, I'll go out for dinner, but I have tea at home. That's my thing. <laughs> uh. Could you, me per no, Kevin, me personally, I, I would struggle to drink a whole can because that's because of the gas um, and it's quite heavy. But so for anyone having two of those, I, I commend you, but I doubt it. Uh, John, I drink that Clamato before 1pm rock festival. Yeah. Walid. Stick a breadstick in it. I haven't got any breadsticks. <laughs> ah, here we go. Right, Trevor. 80% uh, beer, 20% Clamato. Okay, one last question for you, Trevor Rose. The beer, how do I relate this to you guys over there? Um, I'm assuming that you don't mean... So, right, in the UK, we have craft lager, which I'm assuming is your... What do you call it over there? I can't even think of the... the so, the big, the big UK brand... The, the, sorry, the big US brand that's, I think it's US, that's over here. It's like Beaver Town uh, Neck Oil. I'm just trying to relate what sort of beer you would have. I tell, I tell you what, Trevor, just let me know what beer you have and I'll Google it. Uh, and then I can describe it to the UK. Uh, let me know in here. Yeah, Trevor, let me know what beer you have and then I'll translate that into English. <laughs> because I don't think you'd have that with like a, even though that's got Bud Light on it, I don't, I don't think... You'd have like Carlsberg or Heineken or things like that with it in the UK. I think you'd. I don't know. Right. No more then. Right, hang on. What's this? Uh, they have some great flavours the UK are lacking. Yeah, we're talking. Yeah, weirdly, I don't, I don't get it. The, like JJ is smashing it with flavours, but no one else is really playing ball. Even, even Absolute is really hard to get. Some of the flavours in the UK. I don't get it. Stolly, Stolly started it all. Stolly went mental with their flavours. They were brilliant. Uh, Vibrova, sorry, not not Stolly. Vibro, well, who went first? Vibrova went. Well, Vibrova, Vibrova went first, and then Stolly followed suit very, very quickly afterwards. Um, obviously, Absolute were there already, but um, but then like Smirnoff and Finlandia, Grey Goose, Grey Goose were very late to the party with Poire and uh, what was the other one? L'Orange. I think was their other one. But yeah, it was just nuts. Uh, right, cheers, Vino. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming, my friend. Uh, what's that? Lunch and dinner. I am in the middle of England. So lunch is at lunch, dinner. Yeah, okay, cool. Lager, not with ales. Yeah, but then we, lots of, you know, this is the whole new language in the UK we've got to get our head around because lager, if you said lager to most people in the UK, they would totally think Carlsberg, Heineken, Budweiser. Whereas actually, I don't, even though that is Bud Light, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know. Cause and Bud, okay, all right. Interesting. Interesting. I think you could do a lot more damage in the UK people. I think you could do a lot more damage and have more fun with like your uh, Camden uh, Hell's Lager, your Adnams uh, Dry Hopped, though the craft lagers. I think that would be amazing with the craft lagers. Right, Slim Jim. Can you tr try and make it at the ration? Yeah, I have to go and buy tomato juice because obviously i've got nothing here i don't even have any beer in the house so yeah I'll, I'll have to do some beer i've got a video for drink stuff i might have to change it because it's beer week or something uh, in two weeks time and i'm filming beer cocktails on tuesday for drink stuff uh, and i might have to add that to it because that's just kind of 
impressed me actually. So I was going to do a, a Lagerita, uh, an espresso stout martini. I forget what the other one was now. I've got six. I've got six to do over two videos, so I might kind of add that in actually. You should write a book. Funny you mentioned that. Uh, end of November, early December. <laughs> Do it with Heineken, it'd just be okay. You could do it with Heineken, but if you say, like, say this is the thing, right? Hi, in the UK, right? You've just said, Well, it was cause and bud. People are just the UK people are just going to laugh at you now. And Heineken hasn't got a much better rep, you know. Heine, Heineken is a much better beer in the UK than what bud and cause light are, um, much better. They've got just Bud has got such a bad reputation in the UK. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why I'm. I don't know. As I'm not a beer drinker, I don't know. Uh, right, Walid, go to my website, mate. They're all on there. Just go to my website. Uh, click so stevethebarman.com. Click. Uh, I think it says blog and recipes. I forget what it's actually titled now. Just blog and recipes, and there's a, there's a search bar there, and just search out any ingredient. That I've ever used, or what you've got, or you can scroll through all the recipes, or you can just go and type in vodka, or pineapple liqueur, or chewacca, or honey tequila, or uh, rhubarb vodka. Just so use that search bar, search bar, and you you'll find the recipes you want. See, nobody people people go. Oh, can you put the recipes in the comments? The recipes are in the comments. You just have to click the link and go to the website. It's so much easier. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I, you know, Carlin, yeah, Carlin, Carlin and Foster's, yeah, Carlsberg is marginally better than Carlin and Foster's, but, you know, I'd still put Heineken as better than those three. I'd put Heineken in the same sort of thing as Amstel and San Miguel and, and that kind of thing. Just different, that's all. Right. Sorry, yeah, sorry, 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 that's, yeah, sorry, sorry, that's what I meant. There's another one. What's the other big... Um, it wasn't Beaver Town. It was uh, Sierra Nevada. That's what I was thinking of. If unless someone's put that down there, the green, the green tin. That's what I was thinking of. Not Beaver, not Neck Oil. Uh, Sierra Nevada. That's what I was thinking of. Bud and cause. I'll translate cause. <laughs> Our cheaper beer. That's why. Okay, fair days. Right, okay. Smirnoff have a load of gym. Oh. That's why we like you, George. Knowledge bombs. Okay, so that's why... It... Oh, okay. Is that what you meant... Is that what you meant earlier about the Crown Royal? The flavours? I wonder. I wonder if that's what you meant earlier. I hadn't, I hadn't gotten on to that. Uh, bud is what you drink if you don't want to get drunk. But yeah, because you'll just wee it out quicker than your than the alcohol will go into your system. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Yeah, but I reckon. Well, see, this is the thing, right? This is this is the the cocktail side of me coming out. I that's what I'm saying. I reckon if you have a decent beer, I reckon that's going to taste even better because that's actually quite nice. Is it warms up a bit? It needs to be cold. Um, let's put my ice back in here before I forget. That's in the mountain. Um. Yeah, it does need to be cold, but I, I just I don't know. I think I think if you play about with that and have have it in a better quality beer, I think that's going to taste even better. Just my little head. Right, uh, I've come to the end of the comments. Twenty one forty nine. Uh, if anyone's got any last minute bits and bobs, uh, 
speak now or forever hold your peace. Otherwise, I'm going to just see what people are saying in the old DMs. I've got a few DMs pop up here. Uh, bum, bum, bum. I don't know why. I don't know why people. Some people are watching, but they're. Uh, I'm not going to name and shame you because you obviously DM me on here for a reason. But why do you DM me on here if you're watching and not the not message publicly? I won't name and shame you, but I don't, I don't get it. Speak, chat, chat. <laughs> Say hello to people. Make new friends. I don't get it. I'll, I'll look at them in a minute. Uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No more, no more, no more. Oh, hang on, Pat. Yeah, interesting, interesting. I, hadn't, I actually hadn't cottoned on to that. <laughs> oh, for that price, that's probably, John, for that price, that actually might be uh, the imported um, stuff. So that actually might be newer imported uh, American Jim Beam. Uh, so it might actually be 75 CL bottles or 750 mil bottles. I don't think that's a 700 mil bottle. That's actually a decent price for imported. Normally imported stuff's around the sort of high 30s. But it has to be imported. It's not basically what I'm saying is I don't think that's the limited edition. Uh, I don't think that'll be the seven uh, the 2015 limited edition stuff. I think that'll be the newer stuff. But that's a decent price. Okay, I might well actually. I don't know what I'm saying now. I could have a look, can I? I could have a look while I'm just saying goodnight to you all. Uh, where was it? Uh, whis no, hang on. Was it Whiskey Exchange? Yeah, Whiskey Exchange. Whiskey Exchange. Whis oh, flipping now. There we go. Uh, allow. Right. Uh, search. Jim... Beam maple. Oh, hang on. Hang on a minute. The, the, the bottle is the 2014, 2015 thing. The picture, where's the size? Fax, is it under fax? No. How do we know what size bottle it is? If it's a 700 mil, it's, yeah, 70 cl. Jesus Christ, right. So that bottle, that whiskey, this is this is how nuts it is. So whiskey exchange in the UK is still selling that. Right, that is, as it's a 70 CL bottle, that was distilled uh, way back in 2014. <laughs> if that was a 750, they would have imported it. And bearing in mind that that is now seven years old and it's nearly 30 quid a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it's just no. I don't understand why more people didn't buy it. I, don't, I really don't. It's a cracking stuff. I might actually get. Oh, can I warrant? Oh, I don't know whether I could warrant paying thirty quid for something that used to be about sixteen, seventeen. But there we go. Right. Uh, so yeah, hundred for a seventy cl, John. That is a hundred percent the limited edition stuff. Um, from there, if it was a seventy five cl, it would be. The imported to the UK, it would be the American market. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Who, who was that? Okay, I don't know what they did in Europe because and what size aren't you? Aren't you seven fifties in Europe as well? It's just the UK that's seven hundred, surely. I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking now. It is. I honestly, so this could be the thing, right? This happened with Sailor Jerry. We, we noticed that the, the, the people that had stocks of the pre-2009 Sailor Jerry, the price started going up and up and up. And it got to the point where a 70 CL of back, so we're talking like 2011 now, 2012. So three years after they changed the um, recipe. The 2009 stuff would go for 50, 60, 70 pound a bottle um, because it was that rare, because obviously it just wasn't being made anymore. So now that they've stopped making the maple in the US, it, it might, I don't know. I don't know. It might actually be, 
I don't know whether it would be worth investing in or not. Interesting one. Interesting. Hello, James. Sorry, I didn't know James. I didn't know you were watching. Thank you, James. Uh, see you later. Sam, I'm assuming Sam was in bed ages ago. <laughs> School holidays. He doesn't have to go to bed yet. Surely he can stay up for another hour or so. Come on, James. Stay up. Stay up and get drunk. Uh, might be. I'll be Al Ho. I'd be really interested to know if that is limited edition, if that's UK limited edition stock, or whether that is different. Uh, I'd be really interested in that. Anyway, uh, that's that's it. That's enough. To be, this and that's the crazy thing, right? I don't know if you can see this. Hang on, this is the nuts thing, right? Can you see that? It's twenty eight ninety five a bottle, but bearing in mind it's two thousand and fifteen, you can still buy a case of six. <laughs> this is how much stock they've got of it. The Whiskey Exchange, and I've known this for years because the Whiskey Exchange has been the only place to get Jim Beam Maple uh, for years and years. Massively overordered. Massively overordered. <laughs> I, I want to know. Can I order? Oh, hang on. Can I order like 10 cases? Oh, hang on. <laughs> get 60 bottles. I want to know how much stock they've got. That would be quite hilarious. Right. Uh, am I drunk? No. I I don't get drunk off spirits. I'll get I, if I had if I had two of those. If I had two of those, I'd be a damn sight drunk drunker than if I had drunk spirits or not. I can't handle beer. Anything for even though it's like four or five percent ABV, two pints of lager or cider, and I'd be lightheaded or you know, feeling quite tipsy. Spirits, I'll just drink them all night long. They don't really affect me to a point now. Sugar does. If I have cocktails, the sugar kind of gets me a sugar high and, and gets me a little bit drunk. But neat spirits, no. Drink them all night till the cows come home. <laughs> Can you imagine that though? Can you imagine if they've still got like 60 odd bottles? Like if you 10 cases. 60 bottles. They'll, bearing in mind, they're probably selling like one a month. <laughs> Bill! Bill, Bill, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for, thanks for commenting. Thanks for watching. I think, yeah, it's just a weird one. So, wine. Wine, I'm all right on. Wine, I can, used to, but I haven't done it pre-COVID, but... Uh, wine I could have a couple of bottles of and have a thick head, but nothing more. Two glasses of sparkling wine and I'd feel really lightheaded. I think it's the gas. I think it's the gas in the sugar that does stuff to me these days. Um, but yeah, a spirit. I've, I've always been like that though. It's why I love spirits. I can just drink. It's, that is just so expensive for me going out if I'm drinking like that. I'd If I was going out, I'd rather have two pints and have an early night than have... Just have a night of old fashions and spirits. It's just been how we are. Right, then. I'm going to call it a day there. It's nearly 10 o'clock. Lots of chatting. There will, just for the few of you that have remained on, uh, there is no live show next week because I'm away on my holly bobs. Um, and I'm not even sure there'll be one the week after. Um, because, just because. Um, but I will let you know uh, there. But I'm I'm on holly bobs uh, next, because it's my birthday. Uh, a week on, well, I don't even know what day. Week on Monday? Week on Tuesday. Don't know what day it is. Week on, week on Monday. So, yes, no live show next week. Um, but hey ho. Thanks all for watching. Uh, cut to the spice night night. There to chatting. I'll tell you what, while you're just chatting to each other, I'll turn the camera off. You lot can, whoever's having the conversation, RDA and Bill, you can you can chat to each other for a couple of minutes, uh, but I'm going to turn the cameras off and all that. So, and then I'll finish the live stream in about five minutes after I finish washing up. All right. Thanks very much. Good night, uh, and I will see you. I'll see you, legends, you members, uh, probably in the morning on Discord. Um, but for everyone else, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care.
Kevin, I'll get uh, I'll get Mummy Barman to drink it. <laughs> I said I'll turn the camera off, not the not the mic. <laughs> yes, yes, Pat. No, no live next week. I'm not here next week. Oh, Georgie F. Georgie F, I'm still here. Slide into my DMs, Georgie F. We'll have a little chat. That's, that's freaking people out now because the, cam the camera's off, but the mic's still on. <laughs>
carpet. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> You lot, go, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, that was just for you. That was, right, I'll close in the stream. You see? <laughs> I'm going to have to go and listen to that back now. I've got all my members are in the Discord going, Steve, your live stream's still on. Steve, your live stream's still on. Yes, I know it's still on. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> oh, look out. Who's coming on there now? Might have to do that. Waiting for the encore. Encore, encore, they're all coming out. <laughs> I've tipped everything else away, though. <laughs> right, uh, I'm definitely going now. The live stream is going in five, four, three, two, one. Good night.